To get started, I'd like to introduce you to our speakers today, Brad Edelson and Liz Etzel. Brad works as an account manager for IGPS, and Liz works on our customer support team as a support engineer. Brad and Liz, I'll turn it over to you. Awesome, thank you, Holly, and thank you for that wonderful introduction. I want to uh, also thank everyone today for sitting in on this training. Uh, I think this is gonna be a valuable tool uh, for all sign professionals uh, using Spike, and so let's go ahead and dive on in. So the agenda for today is as follows. Um, I'm going to start off and talk a little bit about how to get started with Spike by how to attach it uh, and the steps that you need to take. Uh, I will then dive into a live demo of both of the app and the cloud and show you some specific features and functionality pieces uh, that you may or may not have seen and, and just walk through it all for you. Um, from there, I'm gonna talk about a few tips and tricks uh, and just go over some best practices for you and just how to get the most out of your spike uh, for the most consistent and accurate types of measurements. Um, and then lastly, I'll hit on when not to use Spike. Uh, Spike is a wonderful tool, uh, but there are definitely a ton of instances where you definitely don't want to use Spike or you don't want to focus on using Spike, and I'll, and I'll touch upon that, and then we can open it up for Q&A. Uh, as Holly had mentioned, feel free to type in your questions into the chat box, and we will address all of those at the end uh, of the presentation. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on in. So. How to attach your spike. So first off, you're going to want to download the app off of the App Store or Google Play. And you're going to attach your spike um, via the tablet version is going to attach your uh, tablet case uh, via adhesive strip, which is the one on the left hand side you can see over there. And then the one to the right is the smartphone version, which is going to attach to your smartphone that you're using with a clamp. And so both of them connect to your smartphone or tablet uh, with via Bluetooth. And so um, in terms of positioning of where you put your spike, you just wanna make sure uh, for the smartphone version that it's just a little bit under the camera and that you're putting it back in the same place uh, relatively every time you put it back on your smartphone. As for the tablet version, you wanna make sure that the spike is directly under the camera. So for Apple devices, it's gonna be right under the camera there on the left. Um, versus with Android devices, the camera's in the middle. So you're just gonna wanna make sure that it's centered directly under the camera. And so as long as you have a spike supported device, uh, whether it's a tablet or a smartphone, uh, you can switch spike to, to different devices. So the second piece of how to attach your spike, I just like to dive a little bit into the spike itself, the hardware itself. Uh, this specific version is the smartphone version, uh, but both of them have the same guts internally. So you can see up at the top is the laser emission lens and receiving lens. That is the laser rangefinder that allows for this magical tool to work. Um, next, you can see where the clamp release button, this allows you to release the clamp uh, when you're putting it onto your smartphone. The power button is at the bottom and to turn it on, you're gonna hold it for just a couple of seconds. It charges via micro USB, uh, which is the same thing that you would charge your Android phone with. And then the LED indicator will blink uh, when it's connecting to Bluetooth Blue. Uh, and you wanna make sure that it's, that it's fully charged. It takes about four hours to fully charge the device uh, from dead. All right, so what I'm gonna do here now is I'm going to hop on into the app itself and give you a live demo. So right now, you guys are looking at my, at my tablet screen. And so I've already downloaded and installed the Spike app off of the App Store. I'm now going to open up the Spike app. And the first thing you're going to notice is that there's no measuring device connected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tap to connect device. I'm now going to turn on my device and you can see it's found my Spike device. I'm gonna click and it's connected. You can see the battery is live, that is the battery life. Uh, so you can see if it's getting a little bit low, you just wanna make sure to charge it. Uh, it does have an automatic function where you're, if you're not using Spike uh, for about 30 to 45 seconds uh, at all, the app, uh, et cetera, it'll just shut off and that'll just save you a little bit of battery. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hop into the settings all the way at the bottom. So first off is the unit of measurement. This is where you can change 
from feet to inches. Uh, and maybe if you use meters, uh, you can set, you can change it there. Uh, next is calibration. So there's two different calibrations that um, are available here. The first one is aligning the laser. Now, this is not too important to do out of the box, but if you're switching from, let's say, an Apple uh, device to an Android device or to different smartphones, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're just aligning the laser once you've switched. Uh, but like I said, out of the box, it is not necessary. The next calibration is calibrating the compass. This is not so uh, prevalent for our signage professionals. Um, but if you do need GPS location or want GPS location, you're going to want to calibrate the compass. Both of these are extremely quick and easy to do, take about 30 to 45 seconds. Uh, as we move down a little bit farther, you can see in the configuration, uh, you always want to have the laser indicator on. Uh, drawing the alignment grid is completely up to you, it's personal preference. Uh, essentially, it'll have a grid on the back of the screen for you uh, as, as, as a view. Uh, save to photos will save a duplicate photo to your camera roll on your smartphone or tablet and then cloud is where you're going to log in the, into your your personal cloud account as well as the uh, basic tutorial pieces so I'm going to first off do a photo measure for you so as you can see as I'm moving around it's a live laser rangefinder. So you can see I'm about eight feet from the wall right there. So in order to measure, I'm going to aim at the surface that, I that I'd like to measure, the planar surface that I'd like to measure, and I'm going to take the photo. And from here, I'm going to open up the photo on the bottom left-hand corner. After doing so, the first and most important step really of a photo measure is doing the alignment rectangle. And so a best practice for an alignment rectangle is looking for the largest naturally occurring rectangle as possible. So for this specific instance, I'm gonna use this whole sign. So I'm simply going to click and drag on the four reticles, pulling the yellow box to all four corners of this sign. Also note, that the, there's a red dot in the middle of the screen. That is no anomaly, that is in fact where the laser actually hit on the plane. And you're free to zoom in, get as precise as you like. Notice up at the top left-hand corner, it'll also zoom in a little bit for you as well. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to now click next on the type, top right-hand corner. And now I'm ready to measure. So. I'm gonna start off by drawing my basic area. And what I like to do is just start off at the top of whatever I'm trying to measure and just click and drag down. And from here, you're able to fine tune it. So I can zoom in and pull each corner like so. So from here, there's a couple different pieces of functionality that I'd like to go over with you to get the most out of your photo measure. The first one is cutout. So cutout allows you to draw numerous areas on one plane, on that same plane that you've, the laser has hit. Um, from there, I can add vertices on that polygon to create a more complex polygon that you'd like. And so you can put up to 32 vertices on any polygon that you'd like. Also, if I go over to more at the bottom right-hand corner, there's a couple of different things I can do. I can lock the rectangle ratio. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna lock the corners so you can drag in all three vertices by just clicking on one of them. And this is a great tool if you're measuring something like windows uh, or more rectangular signs. I can update the alignment, which would mean that I'm updating the alignment rectangle itself. And then I can draw area from alignment, which will draw the main area from the alignment rectangle that I've done. So from here, what I'm able to do now is hop over to length up at the top and draw the necessary length lines and width lines that I need. Now, please do note that I'm only able to measure everything on the plane that the laser, the plane or surface that the laser is hitting. So I cannot measure anything in the background or on the ceiling or on the ground in this specific instant. If I'd like to do that, it would just need to be another photo. 
So from here, I'm going to now save my photo with all of the measurements now embossed on that photo. You can see here in the details, the bottom left-hand corner, I have my area, my cutouts, my main minus my cutouts, which is a wonderful functionality to subtract the square footage off of the total area, my lines, and then some other pieces of metadata that are collected. If I wanna export this photo off of my smartphone or tablet, I'm going to click the, bo the box in the bottom left-hand corner with the arrow, and then I'm gonna choose the file format that best suits my needs. Here we have PDF, which is a wonderful deliverable for your client. It's gonna have the photo with the measurements embossed, and then below it, it'll have a breakdown itemized description of all of the measurements. Uh, the next two are more geospatially oriented. Um, you guys, as signage professionals, don't need to use this as much, um, but the spike file is an XML file that has all of the metadata collected in this photo. The KMZ has the locational information. The photo is just regular JPEG, and then upload to cloud will send it to your cloud account. Uh, for signage professionals such as yourself, we usually see PDF, photo, which is JPEG, and upload to cloud used the most. So from here, I'm going to show you our second measurement functionality, which is point to point. So while photo measure allows you to measure something on a single 2D plane, like a sign, the side of a building, a wall, point to point is two photos for us. And what that lets us do is measure between two points in 3D space. And so for uh, signage professionals such as yourselves, what you're gonna use this for, and what we've seen this been used in the past is for setbacks and right of ways, uh, also to figure out what type of bucket truck that you may need to bring out when you're doing some more precise measurements after you've won that job. So point to point is very simple. I'm going to hold the device steady as possible and wait for the red box around the screen to turn green. Once it does that, I'm able to now take both of my points. You want to make sure to stay as flush as possible when you're pivoting. So I'm gonna take a photo of point A, and I'm gonna pivot my body, take a photo of point B, and here you have both photos with the distance between those two points, as well as the slope between those two points. And then you're now able to export this photo out as a PDF to share with your client. Awesome. So the last piece that I will show you on the app is the gallery. So you can see in my gallery, local is all of the photos that are saved on my, on my app, and cloud is just being able to access my cloud account and all the photos on there. So my captures is where your photos are automatically gonna go. You can see here the photo that I originally took. Um, you're able to remeasure this photo at any point in time. Uh, so if you do go out in the field and take a photo uh, and you need to get some additional measurements, that's not an issue. There's no need to go back to the site. You can just go back on this photo and click edit to remeasure. You're able to select photos up at the top right hand corner that you'd like to send to the cloud. So you'll just click select and then click the cloud up uh, on the bottom right hand corner. You can also trash the photos as well. And then you can also move them to different folders for organization. That's, a, that's another piece of functionality here. But me personally, I like to do my functionality in terms of uh, organization on the cloud, which I'm going to hop into right now. All right, so this is the cloud. Um, the basic cloud is free to all Spike customers and it's intended for beginners and occasional users. So with the free cloud, uh, with the basic cloud, you're getting all of the necessary functionality, being able to do a photo measure, being able to export these photos uh, in PDF, uh, JPEG, and URL format, um, being able to rename the photos and folders, uh, and have a safe, secure space to hold all of these photos and organize all of these photos. So what I'm gonna do here is just quickly show you all of the functionality in terms of uh, the, your abilities on the cloud. So you can see up at the top, you're gonna to start off with a line and you're going to draw your alignment rectangle, just like you would on the app. 
like so. And you want to find the largest naturally occurring rectangle, as I had mentioned. So from here, you would go over to measure. And I just wanted to show you that's, that's how you would do it. Um, but something that we have offered uh, on the pro cloud, which I'll get into is the, you'll notice is the correct perspective. And what is this is going to do? It's going to automatically set the alignment plane. Um, and so you can see here that I'm just clicking it and it's going to make the alignment plane. So it cuts out that step. And then you're able to now measure on the photo area, cutouts, lengths, draw area from alignments, all of that same functionality uh, that's in the app. So now let's take a step back. So th that's really what's offered with the basic cloud. Now, with the pro cloud, which we've, uh, which we've rolled out here a, a couple months ago, there's a couple additional features that we have. And so um, the first one and the biggest one for our signage professionals is scaled image export. So what this does is this allows you to export a scaled photo that's de-skewed, flattened, and set to a one-to-one -one scale ratio, and it automatically um, does this for you. So it's saving roughly 15 to 20 minutes per day for your designer or your production manager, et cetera. And you're able to take this photo and put it straight into any design software that you're using, such as Flexi, Corel, LED Wizard, um, anything that you're using, you're able to put this um, scale JPEG into. So now I'm going to quickly show you um, how it's done in a video in just a second. So the second uh, specific functionality that you're getting with the Pro Cloud is subfolders. So advanced folder organization, being able to keep your project organized with folder hierarchy. So you can see here I've got my sub one and sub two and you're now able to maybe create different folders for different jobs, or maybe if you have a couple of different employees um, under, under one account, you can now have uh, separate folders for them. Uh, furthermore, uh, another piece of functionality you have on the Pro Cloud is being able to add notes to photos, and this really does help for collaboration and communication, whether it's to a client or internally with your, with your sign shop. So what I'm gonna do is I'd open up a photo here. And you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, you can enter your notes. Like so, ISA rocks. And I'm gonna go ahead and just save it. And you can see my notes are embedded in the photo here. And the final piece that I had already briefly mentioned, but I'll just hit on again, is the correct perspective, which currently is still in beta. Uh, but this is going to be another piece that is offered with the pro subscription. And so this automatically does your alignment plane uh, and cuts a step out of your day, which is wonderful. So uh, as I mentioned before, I was gonna show you a video of the, uh, the scaled image import into uh, Adobe Illustrator. And so for this, I'm gonna go ahead and hand this over to our support engineer, Liz, and she is going to run you through this video. All right, hi guys. So, um this is a very brief video going over this, how to import the scaled image into Adobe Illustrator. Basically, we start off in our gallery and you can see we are going straight to measure um, our photo that we took and we're going to go into a line because aligning is very important. Uh, this is the pro plan. So we do have access to that correct perspective beta tool and that just like Brad was saying, saves us a nice step right there. Just gonna select that, calculating perspective correction, and it's done. Then we can go on to report. We don't even need to measure here if we're gonna drop it into Adobe Illustrator. So from report, you can go into download, select your scaled image, and then download. And then you can see it downloads just like that at the bottom of your screen. And then we just drag and drop that file into Adobe Illustrator. So right now, as you can see, it's a little bit too large. So we're gonna change the resolution on that so you can see your whole photo. And as you can see right there, um, the photo has been de-skewed based on that correct perspective alignment. So there are some black spaces now um, on the edges of the photo. And so now we can go ahead and measure the sign that we'd like to um, and, do, and start working on design. 
easy as that. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Liz, for that. So before I dive back into the rest of the presentation, I'd like to just quickly show you uh, a little bit on our website. So here's the main uh, landing page for our website. And so if you want some more information and materials, you're just going to scroll to the bottom. You can click on support. And this is going to take you to our support portal, which we have so much wonderful information and literature and videos to help you guys in your day to day using Spike. And so you can see here, uh, getting started, res other resources, some videos that link to our YouTube channel. One specific thing that I want to show you uh, is, is the supported device document. And so this is being continuously updated, but you just want to make sure that the device that you're using is supported uh, with, with Spike. The last thing I'll show you here is where you need to go to create a cloud account. So up at the top right hand corner where it says customer login, you're going to click on that. You're going to choose Spike because you're a Spike customer. And I'm already logged in here, but I'll go ahead and log out to show you what it looks like. So once you click uh, that spike icon, it's going to bring you to this screen here. And so if you don't have an account, you can just click sign up here um, on the right hand corner and you can make your login information for your basic cloud account. And then you're also able to trial the, the pro cloud for 30 days for free. So I'd really highly recommend um, if you're, you know, a, a basic cloud user already to just trial the, the, you know, the cloud for 30 days, uh, it can't hurt. You can try out the scaled image and all of the additional wonderful functionality that it has to offer. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and move forward with the presentation with best tips and tricks. So uh, I'm going to go over three main tips. Uh, tips and tricks that you're going to want to follow with with your photo measure to get the most out of your spike in terms of accuracy, consistent accuracy uh, within the photo measure. And then I'm going to hop into point to point and show you just basic uh, how you use point to point and, and ways that you want to follow. So the first and most important tip in my eyes is watch where you point the spike laser. You really need to make sure that you're pointing the spike laser, uh, which is those crosshairs in the middle of the screen, at a solid flat surface. And that not only that you're pointed at that solid flat surface, but you're also, the laser is also pointed at the surface or plane that you want to measure. If you're trying to measure windows, you want to make sure that you're not pointing the laser at the window specifically, because it is a laser and it will bounce through and you'll notice that. So you want to make sure that you're pointing the laser at the window frame, or you can even put a piece of paper up on the window and use that to stop the laser from going through. Just use that distance reading as your guide. Here's a visual here just to show you what I had just spoke about. So you can see here on the right hand photo uh, is the correct way to do it where the individual is hitting the laser on the plane that he wants to measure um, and he's drawing that area. Versus the left hand side photo, the individual is hitting the, the plane that's raised a little bit or the facet that's raised a little bit and trying to measure that, that uh, the back wall that's in a little bit more. And so that's not where you're, how you're supposed to do it. As I had said before, if you wanna measure windows, uh, make sure you're aiming at the frame, make sure the laser is hitting the frame uh, or you're putting a piece of paper up there to block the reflectiveness. This is definitely very important. The second tip uh, is do not skip the alignment step. This is extremely, extremely imperative uh, when you're doing a photo measure. Uh, what the alignment rectangle does is it skews the photo to the plane that you're trying to measure and it corrects for that angle and perspective that you're at. So once you've taken that spike photo and you're ready to measure, you're going to take that photo and you're going to draw uh, a naturally occurring rectangle that you find on screen. And so as a best practice, you just want to look for the largest naturally occurring rectangle on the surface or plane that you wish to measure. And so if there's not any type of naturally occurring rectangle, uh, you can manufacture one. 
Uh, so similar to how you're putting a piece of paper uh, on the plane that you want to measure to or on the window that you want to measure, you can you can do that um, with any type of surface uh, and use that piece of paper as the rectangle. So make sure do not skip that alignment step. And the last tip for photo measure is check your angle. So you want to make sure that you're at a position as close to perpendicular to the surface as possible, uh, but no greater than 60 degrees off as perpendicular and per perpendicular. So this applies both um, on the X and the Y uh, vertices, so both, both horizontally, horizontally and vertically. Uh, if you're measuring a taller object, such as a multi-story building, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're stepping away a uh, safe distance from that building to decrease your angle from the building. We have a wonderful video on our YouTube channel that shows you exactly how to do that. Keep in mind that the range of the spike laser um, does reach 650 feet from what you're measuring. So as I mentioned before, you can be a safe distance away from the street in order to reduce that angle. So optimum distance and positions. So we like to say that the optimal distance that you're standing away from whatever your asset you're trying to measure is 15 to 20 feet back. Um, and if you're measuring something indoors, you wanna make sure that you're at least six feet back from whatever you're measuring. If you're any closer than six feet back from whatever you're measuring, the measurements will be thrown off. In terms of the angle and perspective, as I had mentioned in the previous slide, straight on is optimal. So the more perpendicular you are to the plane uh, is optimal, but no more than 60 degrees from perpendicular. And you can see in this visual here, uh, once you get into that past the yellow area, it's, it's no good. All right, so those were all pieces of uh, best tips and tricks for photo measure. Now I'm going to hit on a couple of uh, tips and tricks for point to point. So like I had said before, when I was doing the live demo, point to point allows you to measure the distance between two points in 3D space, both horizontal or, horizontal, horizontal or vertical, does not need to be on the same plane at all. So you can see here, um, I'm trying to find the setback in this photo to the left, um, but really keep this up to your imagination for any type of use cases that you may need. So optimal positioning for point to point to achieve our plus or minus 3% accuracy is to stand in the middle of both points that you're trying to measure. Uh, but if it's something like measuring the, you know, the, the top, you know, the bottom of a building for a bucket truck, that's not really an issue. You wanna make sure that you're planting your feet in a single location where you can view both of those targets. And you're gonna, just like I did in the, uh, in the live demo of the app, you're going to wanna keep your feet planted and you're gonna to wanna to smoothly rotate as flush as possible from point A to point B without moving your feet. Just as simple as that. All right, so when not to use spike. So as I mentioned way, way, way in the beginning of this presentation, um, spike is a fantastic measurement solution but it's really not ideal for everything. So if you need any type of precise measurements that requires uh, greater than spikes plus or minus 1% margin of accuracy, then don't use spike. Uh, this is not meant for any type of technical site survey or production measurements. You don't wanna cut materials with this. Spike is that site survey estimation solution used for quoting purposes only. So this is for before you get the job, you wanna go out and just get a basic estimate of the site itself. That's where Spike's gonna come into play. Anything after that, you're still gonna to wanna to bring out that bucket and truck, um, that bucket truck or, or ladder. Um, so it is great uh, for uh, vehicle wraps, for trailers and box trucks, but not for rounded cars. Uh, when you're trying to do a photo measure with something that's rounded, it's a little bit difficult for the alignment to, to, to work. Uh, so you wanna make sure if you're doing a vehicle wrap that it's, that it's uh, something like a trailer or a box truck, not rounded. Um, for windows, you wanna make sure that you're not pointing the laser directly at the window because it will bounce around and throw off the measurements. Instead, you're gonna wanna point the laser at the window or frame uh, or put a piece of paper 
uh, on the window to use as your target. And then the last piece is uh, when not to use spike is uh, for highly oblique angles. So spike supports uh, distances up to 650 feet. Um, so uh, you do wanna stay in that 60 degree range. And so if you wanna measure something that's out of it, just step back as far as you can to decrease that angle. And so that's definitely uh, something to keep in mind and be cognizant of. So just to wrap things up, um, I want to put up here this uh, slide for tech questions. If you have any tech questions, we have a wonderful support team that Liz is a part of. And you can give us a call or send us an email uh, or hop on our website and send us a message. If you have any questions um, or anything you'd like to share, please don't hesitate to reach out. Well, I think that concludes our presentation. We really appreciate everyone's time and um, hope that this has been helpful and uh, getting you more familiar with Spike. And uh, again, we hope you have a great afternoon. Thanks again.